First year bird. Yeah. Yep, first year bird. Very nice. And now, who claimed that bird? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, friends. Well, we're making our annual trip out west to hunt with our good friend Steve Reese from Top Gun Kennel. We're going to be hunting wild pheasants in Iowa. Steve's invited his good friends, Blake and Shane Boyer. Enjoy. We're going to have some fun. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food, providing performance diets for the canine athlete, and brought to you in part by RST, manufacturers of short chamber, low pressure shot shells. Mud River Dog Products, fundamentally changing the expectations of the hunter and dog enthusiast. Pete Shoe Dryer, helping to start every hunting day with more comfort. And On Point Kennel, providing the finest in dog training equipment. <coughs> Well, Paul, welcome today uh, with uh, Bird Dogs Afield. We got you back in our home state of Iowa. Uh, we've hunted with you for four years now, and it's just an honor to have you come and get to hunt in our hunting ground. So we got some special guests today. We have Shane Boyer, who's a senior here at the local Cedar Rapids High School, and his father, Blake, uh, they're longtime family friends. And um, it's just an honor to go out and take uh, a father-son uh, team out into our really what we call as our honey hole here in Iowa. So I understand that Steve's just taking three shells this morning. Three's his limit. That's all we need, Paul. <laughs> How about you guys? Are you confident <laughs> taking more than three? <laughs> confident you shoot. I better carry some shells for you guys just in case you guys first do. There might be some birds out here. So what we're going to do, Shane, is we're going to go down to the south end of this food plot and we're going to go uh, straight west. And then we'll line up in the line, then we'll come back and hunt it back, and by that time we should have that food pot club covered. All right. So. Well, boys, one for two. There'll be more in here. Good shooting down there, guys. Now, who did shoot that bird? We got that one. <laughs> She's got the bird. Okay. First year bird? Yeah. Yep, first year bird. Very nice. And now, who claimed that bird? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad said he didn't uh, shoot at the second one, so. That was just a little bit too far out of my reach for 20 gauge. <laughs> that was all yours, Shane. Good job. Hi, folks. Just a quick sponsor's message, and then we'll be right back with more Bird Dogs Afield. <laughs> Hi, friends. You know, we have an unconditional bond with our canine athlete friend. That bond is built upon respect. Reward that respect with a premium dog food. My choice is native. It has no fillers, no soy, no wheat, no corn, no preservatives. It comes in four levels of fat and protein to meet the stress and activity level for your dog. Make the switch today, native performance dog food your dog will be happy and so will you. So Paul, what we just walked through here was a food plot that we put in two years ago. And what we like to do is rotate it every three years with corn and then we let it set two years before we come back. What happens is you have food within a 15 acre patch, you have food for the pheasants to get them through the winter and carry them over. 
and then you'll have the noxious weeds grow up the second year you make good nesting and brood raising cover because there's insects in there with the uh, weeds weeds create bugs bugs are what feed our young and carry them over and then you have the third year is very good nesting cover so that really works good and what we've done here is just rotated every three years and that's why we have birds in this 240 acre property and what you see out here is uh, the government released the CRP fields this year that they could bail it for our, our um, local livestock producers because we went through a bad drought this year and uh, worst drought for many many years so our local livestock producers need this forage to get through uh, and be profitable on their end as well. Folks, we're here with our host, Joe Henderson. This is his farm. And uh, Joe, this is wonderful that you've allowed us to come in and hunt your farm today. And I understand uh, the Henderson family has had this for how many, 147 years? That's correct, yes. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And you've got some, some very nice CRP land here. Um, Tell me about that. Is have you found with the with the, the price of, of grain today that it's that it's worthwhile keeping it keeping it in CRP? Probably not as it is set up right now. Yes, no, <laughs> it's not. It's it's not. So um, when when your CRP contract uh, ends, it's more beneficial to you than to to grow crops. That's possible. Yes, uh, it, we don't know what the government program is going to be in a couple of years yet. I, I understand that. Well, we're certainly looking forward to the hunt, and uh, I want to thank you for having us here, Joe, and, and we'll check in with you later and tell you how our hunt went. Hope we get a couple more pheasants. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few more from the mild winter last year. We got a lot more pheasants in this part of the country than we have had. I've seen it on other farms. I'm in the rock business. I go to several farms and pick up rocks and and I can see the pheasants where I've never seen pheasants before, so that's good. Well, that's pretty exciting. All right, we'll check in with you after the hunt. Okay. This is just excellent habitat because more than 50% of the ground is open, so those young brood chicks can survive in here. They can go underneath the cover, and uh, it's open uh, enough where they can dry off, and there's, there's feed, there's bugs right here for them. Oh, you think I did? Gotta have shots. Steve, you want to hold up? That's a nice group of pheasants you got up there. <laughs> I guess. I told you we're looking for that 50 bird rise. That was just about bird. it right there. There's one on the ground. That might be my bird. Right where the dogs are now, there's where the bird of ours went down, but I, I think I just winged him, so he's probably running. So this is where we need our versatile hunting dogs to track that bird down and relocate that game for us. Looks like we got a nice retrieve here, Steve. They tracked that bird for probably 200 yards fall. That bird uh, still had the survival instincts to run away, and uh, this dog come up and just took it in a whole different direction and uh, brought in our our first bird of the year in Iowa for uh, harvesting a, a wild bird. So Wonderful. 
and she takes it right to her master. Although that was that was Steve's bird. Look at that, huh? Nice job. Great job. Boy, Steve, I'll tell you that that's when the versatile hunting dog really comes into play, isn't it? Absolutely. We had all kinds of scent in that area where um, there was hens and roosters alike getting up. Nice pocket of pheasants here for Iowa. And uh, dogs are still on point. That bird flushed on his own. We shot it. The dogs didn't see it. We brought him into the area where that bird went down. That dog tracked that bird for about 200 yards. Just kept working it, working it, working it. Finally, the bird jumped and the dog got it for us. So <laughs> that was a really good, that's what we train dogs for. That's uh, that's worth more than a point is to find that down bird. You bet. So Good, good job. Very exciting. Good job, Blake. It's not. Hen. Now we got two on point here. Two dogs on point. Yeah, these birds are spooky today because it's windy out. So when those dogs, any any indication of birds hustle up there. You've seen how that die pointing that rooster got up so far ahead. It'd be crazy today. Well, Shane, we wanted to get you in on some shooting. So I think if you're out in this brome field a little more, uh, I'll walk the edge and hopefully the birds come your way. What we'll do is we'll just push it straight to the west here. Okay. So I'll stay out here and Blake, if you want to get in the middle and Shane okay. at the edge. And, we need that uh, trap shooting, Kennedy trap shooting star to clean up after us. <laughs> when we miss, they'll come right to you. You're showing that one. Yeah, I think we'll show that one. Boy, we had a beautiful point. Great find by the dog, a nice flush. And uh, I think the shooter was thinking about his date, his date tonight. Hi folks, just a quick sponsor's message and then we'll be right back with more Bird Dogs Afield. Hi friends, wet boots, no problem. Use a peach shoe dryer, the next day you'll be dry and comfortable all day long. Well, there's a bird got away from us here because, you know, when Princess dies, that's sure that there's been a bird there very recently. Yeah, I think, uh, like always, they, those wild birds learn how to take the back door on us. You know, they'll uh, they get ahead of us, and uh, it's windy out today, so their survival instincts they can't hear and see as well. So they're going to run as far as they can, as fast as they can. And some of the dogs are pointing some hot scent there, back up in the field, and some of them held. It's probably the younger birds held for us, but. What we're seeing today is a really nice mix of combination of hens and roosters and that's been uh, that way all year. Uh, more hens than roosters and I think hopefully Mother Nature's telling us that uh, we need to repopulate this uh, population of birds. So we're seeing nice hens today and get some hen points and some good dog work and we sure are having a lot of fun. You know, some of our shooting's better than others but uh, that's okay Shane, hang in there buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that bird ran right down between Blake and me. Yeah, I don't know. She says it's still there. And, well, they're sitting tight. Boy, I guess. Again, awful good dog work. You know, when Princess dies on point like that, you're pretty sure you got a bird. Do we have a point way up ahead? No, they don't. They're just getting up there and waiting for us. So All right. We'll bring them back in a little bit. Yeah. She's a great dog. Looks pretty sure here. It's Princess Die. Could be that rooster that just flushed way up ahead.
Was that a Steve Reese miss? That bird down, Steve? All right, good dog. Maggie here. Here. Come on, Maggie. Here. Maggie here. Maggie good here. dog. Good girl. Maggie here. Good girl. All right. That bird tried to slip out the side of me, Paul. He Boy, out the side door, huh? <laughs> yeah, he was taking a, taking a different route. Another young bird, Paul. Good job, Steve. Thank nice you. Nice shooting. That's what it's all about. Oh, you bet. So. All right. So, you know, Steve, this morning we covered this nice food plot and uh, had some good flushes, but then we got up into the grass and had about a 40 bird flush. Uh, were those birds uh, heading towards the food plot or do you think they had already fed and they were going back to loaf in the grass? Well, one thing I think that they might've been up over that hill out of the wind and into the south slope, slope of the sun. So I, it could be that they were already out feeding early this morning and just went back over that edge into the south slope or they might've been coming into that food plot. You know, I'm glad we hunted that food plot first. There was a lot of birds in there as you could tell, and there is open so they could dry off the feathers from being in that brome grass overnight. So, okay, let's push her. <laughs> well, we had, a, we had a real nice point there. We had a point and an honor and a nice flush. But I think the bird's still flying. You know, they look so big and fat flying. You say, how can I miss that I bird? Know, that one, I don't know how I missed. <laughs> Wait a minute. Say that again for me. I don't know how I missed. <laughs> Folks, with us today is Shane Boyer. Uh, Shane is a local high school student. And, and Shane, welcome to Bird Dogs Afield. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Shane uh, uh, has quite a career. He's, he's a football player. I understand he's in the choir. He's, he's a very well-rounded young man. But uh, you also like to do some hunting. Now, tell me a little bit about how you got into hunting. Uh, my father introduced me back when I was about 13. I uh, went out with him and got my first bird. Wonderful, and and uh, now you like to do some some trap shooting, don't you? Uh, yeah, at our school is a trap shooting club, and uh, got me introduced to it. And the past couple of years, I've been shooting trap. And how you do, how do you do? Uh, I do pretty well. I shoot around high twenties. That that's wonderful. You know, we had a great day today, honey, with uh, Steve and your father. Uh, uh, what does something like this mean to you to go out and have a nice morning with your father pheasant hunting? Uh, it means a lot. It's a great bonding experience. You get to go out and uh, enjoy the great outdoors and hunt some birds. Perfect. Shane, thanks a lot and, and good luck with your future uh, plans and career. All right. Thank you. Boy, the dogs are sure giving us a nice work pattern here back and forth. Very, very nice. Yeah, very nice dog work. They track that, that hen quite a ways. Yeah. Hen. Got a nice point here. We've got a point, we have an honor. Everything is just right. Well, he, he didn't move. 
Some great dog work. Oh dear, that rooster exploded right under my feet. Look at this dog work here. We've got a point and we've got two dogs honoring. Now let's hope we've got a rooster here. Boy, there have been a lot of hens. But there's so much scent in this field. We're getting a lot of unproductives. Well, all that work for a hen flush. Good dog work. Whoa! <laughs> Another hen. But boy, wasn't that nice dog work, huh? This is a hen field. We're getting a few roosters. Hen. These dogs staying steady to the flush up here. Isn't that beautiful dog work? No chasing. <laughs> Boy, those dogs work that for about uh, five minutes. Classic uh, point, relocate point. It was a hen, but uh, you have to give the, the dogs five stars on that one. Good job. Good job, Lake. That's a good looking bird. That might be the longest tail feather of the day. I know, I think it is. I think that wins the tail feather contest. Hi folks, just a quick sponsor's message and then we'll be right back with more Bird Dogs Afield. Hi folks, you know, we spend a lot of money on our dogs on our guns, on our travel. Sometimes we overlook our shot shell and that delivers the payload, you know. RST is my choice. It's a premium shell, high performance, low pressure. Check it out today. This is the shell you want this fall. RST shot shells. Well, this here is about a 13 year old brome field. So you can see that Brome here, the CRP that we typically have in Iowa, is not good uh, cover. Um, when the, the hen lays her eggs in here and they hatch, those little poults can't get around through here, so we have a lot of death due to the brome grass here in Iowa. A lot of people like to see more brome, but the habitat you see down there in the food plot is a lot better for nesting cover and also for raising our brood raising. But another thing, this here, when we get an inch or two of snow, this will be flat. So really what we do need is we need some farmers to uh, rejuvenate this, turn it over, crop it for a couple years, and then come back in and seed it down with some correct habitat. Something that's more uh, open underneath, a little heavier for winter, and, and more insect producing. Brome does not produce insects, so those poults can't eat out here. They can't survive. Five. Four short of her limit, Shane. 
Well, the dogs have certainly worked hard and they're, they're getting a good drink of water here. Excellent dog work this morning, outstanding. And you know, when we hunt with Steve Reese and Top Gun Kennel, you know that's what we're gonna get is excellent dog work. Oh, I am had a dog too, huh? Wait a my shadow. Folks, you know, uh, every year I hunt with my good friend Steve Reese, and it's such a, an enjoyable experience. He's a great hunter, he's got great dogs, and uh, Steve, it's, it's so wonderful to hunt with you. Well, welcome to Iowa, Paul. We're glad to have you come out and get to hunt with us for once. Well, I thoroughly enjoy it. Now, we've already been out in the field, and we've had a great hunt today, and as, as expected, it's just a wonderful experience. Uh, Steve, tell me a little bit about, uh, about Iowa this year and the pheasant numbers. Well, Iowa's starting to make a comeback this year. We've had five years of bad weather. We've had, uh, you know, some challenges with the, the acreage uh, price, the, volume, the dollars of corn. So a lot of this cover has been turned over. But this year uh, we had a mild winter. Um, it appears like uh, our population is coming back. Uh, today you got to see uh, we, we easily could have had our limit by noon today. Uh, a few misfires, a few missed birds are those that had Teflon on them. But uh, you can see the numbers are coming back. Last year we hunted that field, and we didn't see that many birds all year. Well, boy, I, I thought there were a lot of birds there, that's for sure. Uh, we had some great dog work, and, and, and we always get great dog work with Steve Reese. Speaking of dogs, uh, uh, you feed native dog food, don't you? Yes, we do. We fed native here for about six years now get along really good with it. I think it's key to a lot of the success that we have with uh, our kennel business, uh, feeding a, a quality dog food, having the right genetics and the training program. They all go hand in hand. So if you have a weak link in any one of those, that's gonna be in trouble. Boy, you're, that's right on it. Of course, I feed native in my kennel too, and I, my dogs just thrive on it. Steve, as always, thanks so much for the invitation. Thank you, Paul, for coming out. Bird Dogs Afield. Presented by Native Performance Dog Food and brought to you in part by RST Shot Shells, Mud River Dog Products, Peach Shoe Dryer, and On Point Kennels.